All right, we're back here, CD399. I uh, hope you enjoyed that documentary. I know some of y'all probably have seen it, some of y'all haven't, but I think it gives you a nice sort of uh, look into making South Park at least, you know, in, you know, 2000, I think 11 or 2010, you know. It'd be interesting to actually see something that uh, went a little bit more into like how they made it in, in 1998, you know, if there was a documentary or anything on that. Um, anyways, uh, with that said, I think just some things to talk about. We'll talk a little bit about the TV industry in relationship to South Park and kind of how it works with this crazy fucking graphic that I made uh, that you probably will look at and be like, dude, just stop. Like, what are you doing? But um, anyways, I think, you know, you kind of see just to look at some things. And, and I think it's awesome because like last class we watched A Very Crappy Christmas. And, you know, that was a very self-reflexive ep episode. What up, Caspian? <laughs> Taking a dump. <laughs> uh, that was a self-reflexive episode, you know, where, uh, you know, they kind of talk a little bit in, in a way about the labor. And there's a scene where, you know, Stan and Kyle and they're, they're you know, they're taking pictures of, of, um, of the, the stop motion stuff. And then, you know, later on they export it to uh, South Korea, um, you know, which is, you know, where a lot of stuff is actually animated. So for instance, Family Guy, they write everything here. They record all the, the voices, all the dialogue here, and then they send it off and have it animated elsewhere, um, which is one of the several reasons why South Park constantly hates on the Family Guy. Um, other, other reasons are, we'll talk about later. Um, but anyways, you kind of see the process here. So we have like, obviously we see them in the writing room like making a script, right? And like in this essence, like it's such a brainstorming collaborative process. You know, you have Matt and Trey who are kind of heading it. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, there's so many voices uh, involved in, in that process. And you even see them kind of like going out to other people in, in various departments and, you know, running things by them and stuff, stuff like that. So you really just see, you know, and they're always bringing in different comedians and different writers into the, into the writing room. Um, next, you have the process of storyboarding. I have a few slides with some storyboards. And again, you should be uh, watching, watching, looking at, following along with the, um, the TV industry slides, which you can find on the, on the Points of Power page. Um, so anyways, <clears throat> um, Definitely be checking that out, and I'll, I'll, I'll plop up some images of the storyboards. But the storyboards, classic storyboard, um, you know, writing for like you would see for any live action film or, or anything. Um, the next step, once you have the storyboards, is you do uh, the dialogue. So you see, see them recording dialogue, which is pretty fucking hilarious. Um, and, uh, you know, they do all, uh, all of the voices, all the voices for a lot of the kids. Um, and then they, they pitch them up. So, they, so they, they record them and they pitch up the voice so it sounds um, more, more, like a, more like a kid than actually how they deliver the, the, um, the dialogue. But, so they record all the dialogue. Then that goes to the editorial department. And that edi editorial department takes these storyboards and they combine them um, with the dialogue for timing what are called animatics, which are basically these semi-animated um, uh, storyboards that really just get timing down. And then those animatics go off to the animation department. And that's where animation <laughs> happens. I'm completely oversimplifying this process, and you see it in there, but it's a huge department. Everybody's working on different, different elements of it. Um, but I mean, that's kind of like, this is just the general process. Once things are animated, then it goes to like a tr sort of traditional uh, editing department where they, they edit all the animated scenes um, together. And then, you know, you see them at the end, deliver it to the network, you know, via, via satellite. And that's kind of like the last process. And then it airs on television. And then after that, you know, it's, it's available on, online and various streaming platforms. Um, and so we're going to kind of talk through some of that. Um, I'll, I'll show you some storyboards. But I want you to look at the slide that says how TV works. Yo, this shit is crazy looking, but it makes a hell of a lot of sense. So we'll start with Comedy Central. All right. Comedy Central is a cable network. It is a cable network owned by Viacom, which is one of the largest multinational media conglomerates uh, in, the, in the world. Okay. 
And basically, if you follow the green arrows, that's the cash flow. If you follow the red arrows, that's the content flow. So we start with Comedy Central. Comedy Central owns the copyrights to South Park. They are considered the authors by, by law um, for the most part. So they deal heavily with the licensing, et cetera, et cetera. And licensing for toys, all, I mean, every, everything, video games, everything. Um, but the, the guys in their studio, they get, they get part of those proceeds. I mean, they, 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 they have so much power that, that, that they can do it. So Comedy Central owns South Park. So we kind of saw, um, you know, we saw Matt and Trey, right? Uh, Parker Stone Studios where, you know, they come up, you know, come up with episodes with their creative writing team and then they pay their staff who works for them and then the staff delivers content to, to Matt and Trey and then it's ultimately delivered to the network. So that kind of, that kind of, you can see that kind of an action um, and obviously Matt and Trey have, you know, a contract where they're paid a certain amount per each episode or for each season and the seasons have gotten, they've gone from 20 episodes or more down to 10, you know, and we're going to be in the 23rd season this year. Okay. Um, now Comedy Central then, where do they send the content? Well, they were involved in getting it to Hulu and then Hulu pays both Comedy Central and Matt and Trey. They get 50% of all uh, streaming revenues, which is insane amount of, of, of money. Okay. Comedy Central also licenses to 20th Century, 20th Century Fox and Debmar Mercury for television syndication. So when you see South Park on networks other than cable networks or other types of networks other than Comedy Central, um, that's TV syndication. And it's a fairly common, common practice. Okay. Uh, well, <clears throat> how does, you know, how do you get to see it on cable? I presume most of y'all don't have fucking cable. It's like for like old people. Uh, like myself, but um, cable networks pay Comedy Central to be able to carry Comedy Central. So Comcast, Dish TV, um, you know, uh, Satellite TV, all those cable providers or satellite, you know, providers, uh, Warner Cable, whatever, they pay a certain amount of money to carry various cable networks like ESPN, like E! Entertainment Television, like Nickelodeon, uh, whatever. And then Comedy Central obviously delivers them the cable network content. Okay. Uh, Comedy Central also licenses for uh, DVD uh, manufacture and distribution of its, of its content as well. And they are paid for that. And a lot of this goes back to um, Matt and Trey. Now we have Saddam and Satan in bed. That represents us <laughs> uh, consumers. Okay. Um, and you know, obviously we pay cable networks a shitload of money or, you know, uh, Wi-Fi internet service providers a quite a bit of money to have access to this content and they deliver content to us. We also buy, you know, Blu-rays and DVDs, some of us, you know, us old, old people. Okay. Um, but like, Here's, here's the deal, you know, so Comedy Central is making money, making money, you know, off of the cable networks, off of syndication, off of DVD sales. But where they make their most, most, most money is off of ad sales. So if we look at the cheesy poof uh, picture, right, and I have the big, big arrow, uh, green arrow. Yo, South Park has created value. And it's created a, a large audience and a valuable demographic. Okay. Cheesy poofs or any, you know, any brand pays for a lot of money for their 30 second or 60 second spot during South Park, particularly a Wednesday, 10 PM first run episode. They pay a ton of money. Now the important part is this, what is comedy central selling these advertisers? They're not selling them the content. They're of course selling them the space, but what is really being bought and sold here? Think about it. It's you, it's us. We're demographics, you know, the more, you know, disposable income are typically the younger we are, uh, typically the whiter you are, uh, you know, the more valuable of a demographic, you are, your eyeballs, your ears are worth more money. So 
industries that rely on ad revenues, right? Um, for instance, the magazine publishing industry, newspapers, uh, radio, you know, TV, cable, etc., that rely on ad sales, not necessarily on subscription models. The product being bond sold is not the content. The content is the salt lake. The content is what gets you there. Get your eyes there, right? The product being bought and sold, the true product is you as a demographic. That gets us through that slide. Now, what this is called is called the audience commodity. This was a, a concept developed by uh, Dallas Smythe. Okay, and basically the thought is this, is any industry that relies uh, you know, on making its revenue from advertising sales, the true commodity is you, the audience, okay? That's the main product being produced by the media. They're creating you as a demo and selling you, right? And that's how they make their, they make their money. Any, any industry like that, there's no other way that they make their money, okay? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, and, you know, he thought about this further and, you know, basically talked about, you know, then what happens is he thinks about, with this said, like all of our awake time, this guy was clearly a Marxist, all of our awake time is labor. We work in the day, we go to school in the day, we do work, right? But then we're also working when we go home for leisure, when we're listening to music on the radio or we're watching South Park on a cable network or a baseball game or whatever, we're being advertised to. And because of this, we're, all, we're always working, right? And, and that's really important. We're always being commodified, we're always being bought and sold, and we're always laboring in some sort of way. Um, so it's just a way to think about it, you know. Uh, that was his idea, and um, you know, just something to stew on. <clears throat> uh, so if you want to think about South Park itself, um, and Comedy Central specifically, Comedy Central is owned by Viacom. Viacom owns a bunch of shitty networks like MTV, VH1, CMT, Spike, uh, BET, Nickelodeon, um, I'm sure some other ones, okay? Uh, they had almost $13 billion in revenues in, 20, in 2019, and they're a highly diversified media conglomerate, meaning they're in sort, all sorts of industries. Um, the primary and majority shareholder of Viacom is a person named Sumner Redstone, okay? Sumner Redstone is also a majority shareholder in CBS and a majority shareholder in Paramount, okay? Uh, he also um, is, owns the private company called National Amusements. National Amusements is one of the largest movie theater chains in the United States. Now, the interesting thing here is that um, you may be thinking about this depending on you know, your education um, you know, on, on the media and on media monopolies. Um, you're thinking this may be illegal um, because you're not allowed to own a film production company, a film distribution company, right? And then a film exhibition company. That's, that, that was busted with the Edison Trust um, you know, in, the early 20th, in the early 20th century. It basically said you couldn't be fully vertically integrated. Now, the way that Sumner Redstone gets around this is he, he privately owns National Amusements, meaning that's his company, um, but he also owns the other companies as majority shareholder. So he's not the outright owner, but he has the most control over those companies because he, uh, he has the largest amount of shares and the most important stocks. So that gives you kind of a sense. He's a real, real rich dude um, there. Okay. Um, and then we can talk a little bit about like cable providers when we're talking about um, media monopolies. Uh, listen, you're not allowed to have a monopoly, you know, unless you do it like Sumner did. And um, the only media companies that are allowed to have monopolies, and these are regional monopolies, are cable companies. And I'm not talking about satellite or, you know, like any other type of transmission. I'm talking about cable, strictly where a cable comes from a post and goes into your house, mostly Comcast, Time Warner. These companies are given re regional monopolies, okay? So like there's basically no competition in your market. Yeah, you can choose between Dish TV, which sucks big balls because I have it, um, or satellite, you know, satellite TV, which I guess is better, or Comcast, which, you know, hey, Comcast also owns like networks 
and owns content. So like you can't see certain content um, when you like have Dish TV. I mean, when I go to watch Sunday Night Football, I can't I can't watch it because I, I I don't get that channel, you know, because it, uh, Comcast won't license it to its competitors, which is stupid. Um, but anyways, uh, so cable companies have regional monopolies, meaning that Comcast is the only cable service that you can get uh, in Eugene. It may be different where you're at now or where you're from. Um, and th this is mainly, and I'll tell you the reason why um, th this happens, is the infrastructure region. Uh, reason. Uh, the reason is like you don't want to have like 20 different cable companies in a region or, or you know a, a regional market because you're gonna have 20 different wires and 20 different posts and you know the infrastructure is gonna be, cr be crazy. So because of that, because it's, it's, it's something where it's it, you know um, just like electrical companies, right? You have one electrical company in, in, in your area because you don't want to have five of them you know, hanging all their wires and different posts uh, competing. But at the end of the day, it also means there is no competition, which means this Comcast can offer shitty service. Comcast can offer expensive service. You know, they won't offer a la carte because there's no one, there's no competition. Satellite companies aren't really hurting their market so much. You know, um, so I mean, that's, a, that's the real deal. So I want you to watch this clip. It's from a South Park episode about the cable providers and how they make us their bitches and how they, how they like it um, so much. So please check that clip out. It's on Daily Motion, which means, <laughs> I don't know, right? And let me just flip up my pockets real clip, quick because, you know, oh, I don't have the, the exposed nipples like on this. But watch this clip. Um, it's, it's just an interesting take on like how much control uh, these companies have if you want to have access to the content. Now, again, as you know, uh, younger heads, like y'all probably don't even like fuck with cable, but like guarantee at your parents' crib, they got cable, you know. But anyways, check out this clip um, and then we'll get back to this. It's obviously a parody on Time Warner. I put the Time Warner logo in there so you can see how they kind of play on that in the last scene. Um, but do enjoy this and then we shall be back. <laughs> 